Hello and welcome to another episode of the Electric Norwegian. I'm Mats. Today, thanks to Jensen and Shelle in Halden, we have borrowed a Volvo EX30. Sort of a modern interpretation of the old C30, in a way. It's Volvo's new, uh, more affordable electric car, a chess platform with one of the Zekers and with smart hashtag one, which we were just out testing. It's an interesting car in many ways. They've taken a Tesla, sort of, and made it Swedish. This is the performance full fat version. It has one single motor rear wheel drive, which is uh, uh, 272 horses and 343 newton meters, not, six, not 200 kilometers in 5.7 and around 344 kilometers range. And then you have the uh, single motor extended range, same rear motor, bigger battery pack, because the, in the the entry entry version has LFP pack, so it's slightly heavier. Uh, not to 100 kilometers in 5.3 seconds and 480 kilometers of range, which is the longest one of the three. And then you have this one, the twin motor performance. 428 horses, 543 newton meters of torque, not to 100 kilometers in 3.6 seconds and 460 kilometers of range, so slightly less range. And also uh, the two entry rear wheel drive versions can pull a thousand tons on the trailer. This dual motor can pull 1600. One of the first things you notice is, uh, well, apart from the lack of an instrument cluster, there's just a single screen here, uh, a small squircle of a steering wheel. Um, the first thing you notice is the um, the good turning circle of this car. It's, but maybe not quite as good as the MAB VW cars, but pretty decent. Buttons on the steering wheel, which is... Well, the whole surface is sort of a moving surface when you touch it, but you have to be very specific with touching the symbols, otherwise nothing happens. It was a little bit... Eh, I don't know. Well, well, I don't know, it's, it's, and then you have the, but it, the, the interior looks decent, it's kind of a mix of uh, part pleather and, 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 and textile surfaces and plastics that are reuse, at least reuse and recycle some materials, which is good, and keep them away from ending up in the ocean or whatever it is. You can also very easily go in here and turn off the EU Ding Dong, as I've called it, the uh, uh, speed warning. It's a lot of e nice solutions to have. On it's not the biggest screen, it's 12.5 or whatever it is, but it's, it's well designed the user interface. It's pretty decent. And you also, of course, this runs Android Automotive, so you have voice control, Google. It's, 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 it's uh, one of the better ones out there that actually does what you tell it to do. So a lot of the functions like seat heating and all of that stuff you can do it through user voice so you don't have to touch the screen and it works decent enough we were at 85 percent and we have 184 kilometers indicated it's supposed to do like i said 400 and whatever it was 60 or something but it's a cold windy day today it's a uh, compact crossover this Tall enough as really a crossover. I don't know. It's not tall enough to be an SUV, and it's not, not low enough to be a to be a hatchback. So I don't know what it is anymore. Uh, but it doesn't really matter. It's a decent car if you don't have a big family, I guess. Uh, but it, if you put the rear seats down, it's quite spacious. You can fit longer things in on the diagonal. One pedal driving. Uh, you can turn it easily on and off here. Yeah. Uh, it's very well judged. Unlike in the XJ40 and stuff, where it's a little bit too aggressive here. It's the sound system here is by the Harman Kardon uh, kind of a sound bar in the front, I think. That's the, almost the only speaker in the entire car, which gives the sound a little bit... But it's a little bit strange, because we used to in cars that the noise comes from different sources around the car. Here it's almost from one direction. So it, 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 it's a little bit off in that way. The rear seats are kind of... <laughs> well, it's not the biggest car, this. So I can sort of fit 
halfway almost beside behind myself but um, not the best space for uh, for my legs massive pano roof is moved so far backwards that the head space is not a problem but uh, leg space for taller or long-legged people is sort of an issue it's okay for shorter, shorter trips but you wouldn't want to sit there for a long trip that just doesn't work out the rear seats in themselves is okay but it's, sort of, it's missing a ski hatch and it's missing a rear armrest with cup holders and it's kind of Cost cutting every here and there. It, that, it doesn't have a head up display. That's, a, that's okay. Okay, I can live with that. I've given too much Model 3 to care, actually. And this center screen, it works. Front seats have gotten a bit of flack for being not comfortable enough. I find them to be okay. I must say, the pillow is a little bit short, maybe, for my long legs. So you can sort of live with that. Uh, the rest of this seat is okay. It's, it's, it's not the most supportive in the entire world. But then again, this is not a sports car, even though it is a performance was. But the car is quick. It's no doubt about that. Even on these winter tires, which are soft, they can feel the power when you ask for it. Definitely. Uh, and all the quirks with the moving. Um, Cup holders and stuff in the center console, and a sort of not lack of storage because there's plenty of storage down on the floor here, and you have your dual chargers and everything. Uh, it's kind of clever solutions, uh, and then and, and, and the door pockets are big enough. And also, I like this interior uh, door handle. Of, of, it's probably not metal, but it looks like metal, and it halfway feels like it. It might be metal, I don't genuinely don't know. Uh, but it looks good. Kind of minimalist, like the rest of the interior. And the plastics here are... They don't really feel cheap. They don't feel terribly up market either. But they don't feel cheap. And that's sort of an important thing. It's a bit like perceived. But the, the only exception there are the slight bit of, uh, of piano black around the, the buttons for the electric windows. Uh, in the center. And the buttons on the stair steering wheel. That's just a big flat plane of piano black. Slightly. It doesn't. Yeah, it just gives off a cheap feel. Well, it's a, it's like it's an affordable car, so you can forgive it then. You can choose your mood lighting and stuff, and that's fun. Uh, around this version starts at around forty-five thousand euros, I think, roughly. Uh, with this kind of equipment, it's about. 50,000, 55,000 euros, depending on market and stuff. And it's not so affordable car anymore when it comes to that, is it? No. But uh, definitely not. Then it kind of moves into a slightly different price bracket in a way. At least it has a frunk and it has a lot of good things. Uh, and it competes in a tough market when you put this thing into performance into power mode as it were power four-wheel drive it really really i mean it kicks reasonably well even in normal mode as i mentioned earlier but i found now you can have this extra power mode it is really quick even it, 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 it's only the tires of course but it's properly properly quick um, and then when you begin to push it a little bit, the suspension that can be a little bit stiff around town settles down and the car feels nicely judged, well, very well controlled, nicely judged suspension. Uh, sound levels are surprisingly, they're not really that high, but they're not much worse than in the Volvo C C40, an XC40, which I drove. Or the EX40, whatever it's called. This car's biggest symbol, it's siblings anyway. And they cost considerably more than this. It has a frunk, it's a tiny frunk, but it's there. And you can use it to put charge cables and gloves and window washer fluid and all that stuff. They normally lug around it. Uh, BMW can't bother to give you one, but 
Volvo cab, so that's good. And uh, the trunk is decent enough, it gives you plenty of smart solutions. This car, it's full of good ideas, and it looks like a Volvo, it looks like a modern Volvo. I like the exterior of it, it's yes, I can live with it. It looks a little bit strange with the split uh, uh, rear tail lights and stuff, but. I get used to you want to get used to the thinking, okay, yeah, this is a modern modern Volvo in the sea of white Tesla Model Ys. And trust me, there is a sea of white Tesla Model Ys in this country. And then the cars like the Volvo and others, like the Jag, which is sadly now out of production, I think, they stand out with their ident with their own unique design and, 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 and character. Green is it's good. When you begin to I wish it was a little bit bigger so you can have your trip meets around. You can have your you can you can have more information on it at the same time. It's a little bit too small to carry all that. Uh, which is sad, but that's how it is. So far we we had a consumption of uh, two hundred and thirty three watt hours, which is perfectly right I guess. We were at sixty five percent, indicate hundred and fifty one kilometers. So it's a decent thing to drive this. It's, 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 it's not as engaging and as fun as, as the smart ones. It's not as quiet as the new Model 3 is. That's the astonishing thing. The new Model 3 costs a little bit more than this does. Well, no, actually, it costs less than this particular four-wheel drive version, but roughly in the same ballpark. The, um, the uh, starting price on this is cheaper than the Model 3, but strikes you with the with the Tesla is just they've done such a good job of the with the sign and sound insulation in that car and the suspension of it. Once again the move the goalposts I guess. If you're a couple or you have occasional kids or occasional friends uh, then you can live with this just fine. If you want the dealer network of the Volvo you want the safety and the, you know the tradition of the Volvo like we were past just earlier now the Volvo, Volvo Amazon station wagon which is <laughs> this car's old 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 family if you want part of that and you can't buy a BYD or a Punkty or, 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 or a Tesla or anything else because it doesn't have any of that this is yeah, there's dealers that's been selling Volvo for donkeys, and people have a have a um, attachment to them. Sometimes, you know, cars is emotions, and cars are so much more than numbers. I saw someone here coming up with uh, a comparison between the Tesla Model Y and the BYD Auto 3, and it was uh, blah 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 blah, and the Tesla came out on top because the Model Y is it's the world's most sold car model for a reason. But as I said, the cars are more than that. Cars are emotions. Cars are details. Like what? You know, some people are going to be annoyed by parts of this interior. I know that. They're going to be annoyed by little things. You know, the frameless side mirrors, for instance, which is a bit strange because I'm not used to it. We're sort of gone around now. We've done. Since we picked the car up, we've done 195. Under the six kilometers, we have uh, twenty-eight percent left and uh, sixty-eight kilometers. So uh, between two hundred and fifty and three hundred kilometers, probably closer to three hundred on a day like today. It's now one degree outside, so in the, the optimal conditions. And anyway, and we've been driving a little bit uh, of the power and stuff. So there's no matrix saddling. It's just on off. Automatic. It is the fastest Volvo ever. It not to 100 kilometers an hour in 3.6 seconds, and it's really, really quick. We haven't had an average, by the way, of 240, uh, 248 watt hours, which is 24.8 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometer. If you prefer that, I don't know if there's any chassis differences on this and the. Uh, Starter car here, the rear wheel drive. Shocking.
short range version. Had the steering, suspension, a little bit stiff around town, but once you get some speed into it and it sort of make it work, it's good. Not too stiff and not too soft. Nicely judged. This is a straw, not a sports car. And this road is atrocious. This hard long winter has been dreadful on our roads. It's full of bumps and lumps and stuff. But the lights are okay. They're pretty bright as you can see straight ahead. So I like it. I like it. Also, this is a fun car. It's a fun Volvo this. You can feel the power of the thing just wanting to go. Um, a little bit more range on these lights, but they're all right. Good morning. So, what do we think of the Volvo EX30? Well, this is a top of the range model. It costs around 50,000 euros, 45 or thereabouts, depending on what market you live in and what uh, rebates the, the dealer is giving you. Anyway. But the entry price of this thing, with the LFP battery and, and, and the rear-wheel drive, is around 30,000 euros, which is relatively affordable. And if you look at it from that perspective, this is a very decent car. I mean, the only thing I can think of is noise levels are a little bit high, but given it's a reasonable car, it's not really bad at all. The sound system is a little bit... I won't say lucky, because it is really isn't bad. It's just it's better than it's better than a Model 3. But a Model 3 is not as cheap as this. It's more expensive, at least until Tesla decides to drop the prices again. Who knows? But that's by the by. A range is actually it's not half bad. It could always have been a bit better, particularly on this version considering the price, but it's not too bad. The uh, infotainment system is full of clever little things and when you use your button, the button on the steering wheel the, the uh, function pops up on the screen and it's a well thought out system. It's a good system. I like it. As for space, it's, uh, it's not a big car. It's a little bit bigger than a Golf actually because I parked next to a Golf in the morning now when I charged it home. And it's about the same size, a little bit bigger, but so space-wise it's alright actually, it's not half bad at all. One thing I noticed in the morning though, and this has to be a setting somewhere which I haven't found, which really made me rather annoyed. I plugged it in in the morning because I was thinking, I, was, I came home after testing yesterday at 20% or whatever. I would plug it in a few hours, get a few, get a few kilowatt hours into it, you know, so we don't have to deliver it empty. It was just completely slow charging because I left it for a few, a few hours. It had 24%. And, well, the truth was more than that because the uh, charger is capable of giving oh, 7 kilowatts. So it should have given at least 7, at least 14 to 20 kilowatt, um, kilowatt hours. Which, but whatever. Uh, it's a setting somewhere probably. I oh. hope. But apart from that, the Volvo VX30 is a decent car, good car for the money. And if you don't have a kid, if you're just you and the kid, you have a decent target space. It's quick, it's fun, it's actually quite engaging to drive this in a every man kind of way. relatively well equipped even though if you go for the uh, lower spec versions you don't get a giant sunroof and there's a few things uh, you lack which you can discuss should be standard or not I don't know depends on where you, where you stand on that I guess and overall I think they've done a good job of the, on the interior there are very little cheap cheap plastics here there are a few of course but not that many 
Um, the range wise is decent. It probably charges relatively quickly as well. I have to try the quick charging myself now because yeah, because I'm charging foolishness with it at home. I like the interior of it, I like the materials, I like the look of it. It looks cool on the outside. It has gone Tesla you have a complete a black fob of a, of a key without any buttons. The car registers when it comes and goes. You just get in the car, push the brakes, put it in put it in drive and go. No buttons, no nothing. And then you have a few key cards as well if you don't have the key fob with you. So they try to be modern. They've, 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 I applaud that, I applaud that. So yeah, there you have it. That's the Volvo VX30. I do hope you enjoyed the video. Like, comment, subscribe and all that stuff. And uh, take care and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.